Camper Project 2.0. All right, guys. Um, so you guys have probably saw the video. Uh, I'm selling the other camper. In fact, I think I have it sold. I'm just uh, waiting on a few things to come through with a buyer. Um, and I've started a new one. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just like I did before, I'll release videos as I build this. Um, the construction techniques, you know, if you've already built one like my previous camper, I'll show you a picture of that here. Uh, or you were planning to, or you're in the process of it. Uh, I found all of those construction techniques uh, very sound. Uh, I've had that camper over a year now. It's had a lot of miles off-road. Um, you know, I think I overall got the design and the materials pretty much right, right from the get-go. Uh, and this one is really going to follow suit with the very same construction techniques. Uh, as you can see right here, um, build the tub. But this project is going to add on to that one. Um, you know, it may be a, a shape and a size that, uh, is, you know, some of you may not like. You might just prefer the old design. But uh, going out camping with my kids and my own experiences, I just wanted to uh, have a couple different features. Additionally, you know, to be honest, I like being out in the garage tinkering and building things. That's kind of where my heart is. So this gives me another opportunity to, to move on and evolve. Um, so as the series goes on, uh, you'll, a lot of it will be very similar to how I built the other one, as I just discussed. But I'm also going to incorporate some new ideas. Uh, I can't say that I'm the only person that's ever came up with them, but I don't see them very often, or maybe I haven't seen them at all. And some different philosophies on builds and truck campers that uh, I think you guys might find interesting. Now, I'm not going to reveal the, the complete overall plans of, of the differences between this new one I'm building and the old one. However, as it goes, I think it will become obvious. Um, but let's, so every, every, every video I'll try to release them, you know, about weekly or bi-weekly or about twice a week or uh, every two weeks. Um, I'll just kind of track where my build process is going. I'll track maybe some problems I've had or things that's worked out well. Um, and then, you know, if any of you do follow along with this, go ahead and throw some comments in about questions or, you know, I'm up for, I'm open for suggestions too that may go along. Um, but I'm going to keep a little bit of suspense in terms of, you know, what the final product will look like. But let's talk about where we're at right now with the tub. Um, so one thing that if any of you guys have followed my other videos that you might immediately notice is that this has a wood floor. Okay. So what I decided to do is not only did I think this wood floor would look nice, and I'll show you here in a minute, it's not all attached. But I've decided that I'm going to add some insulation to this camper. And that insulation starts right here with the floor. So what I did is very much like the other one, uh, I used plywood and built the general shape and construction. Now where I did differ from the other one is in the other one, if you guys recall, I used half inch pre-finished plywood. And that worked out well, and it still is working out well. But in this one, because it's going to be a little bit heavier, there's going to be a little bit more weight loads, I've opted to use a combination of three-quarter and half-inch plywood. So the, the reason I did that is to use the three-quarter in areas where I thought there would be more weight that it needed to bear to add a little bit extra rigidity. But I also didn't want all of that extra weight. So, for example, the, the sides of the tub... Now I have not attached, I guess some people call them the wings, but the portion that would go over the, the bed rails, I have not attached that, but that's gonna be three quarter. But then areas like here, like the back, this is half inch. The floor underneath the insulation, the, the very base level is half inch. Um, you guys notice this little cutout here. Where my finger at? That's different. It's not a huge amount of space, but it gives me, uh, I, think it's, I think that's about four inches, if I remember, of extra internal space. And what you can do is, if you imagine, when this slides in, and the wheel well is going to be, like, roughly in this area, so this part will 
extend closer to the bed rail. Um, and, and as the build goes on, you'll see why I did that. Um, I still kept this side standard flat because I really liked the storage that I can get between the wall of the tub and the, and the side of the uh, truck bed. Um, so, um, as far as if you're asking like how I insulated the floor and how that worked and how these, how this wood floor is working. All right. So let's talk about that. So, like I said, the bottom layer, maybe this little sandwich position here might help out a little bit. The bottom layer, which would be right here is half inch ply. And then I took, um, three quarter. Now this one's doubled up cause it's the edge, but, uh, these are two inches high these little battens and I built a frame around it and then, there, and then it crosses in two points in the middle of this. Okay. And then this is, uh, two inches of polystyrene, um, insulation board. And then the floor is essentially the same cedar that I used for, uh, you know, the other camper over there and what will be used for this camper. Of course, as you guys can see, it's gonna be fit with lap joints. I've planed it down and they fit in here. Um, now I'm gonna attach these to this floor simply with uh, just uh, nails and I'm gonna use that same kind of um, exterior grade. Sorry guys, let me run over here and look at this caulking gun here. The same exterior grade caulking and I'm not you know I'm not a rep for DAP or anything but I this is what I used on the other camera project it's held up for a year and uh, I got this uh, this is a product I got at Lowe's and I really liked it and 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 I'll actually I'll talk about adhesives right here a little bit but that caulking I found has a really a very good adhesive quality um and so between the nails and that caulking, that's how I'm going to attach the floor. Obviously, the second half I still have to, to nail down. And what that will do, though, is it will provide a firm foundation for attachment to the truck, but it will also allow it to flex. So this is one thing that you guys have to keep in mind, that if you built something like this, whether you're building a camper or you just go build a table with it, the cedar, though it's overall has more dimensional stability, which that means how much it's going to move uh, as it expands and contracts its moisture primarily than most wood, there is always going to be some expansion contraction when you're actually using wood. So you have to be very careful in terms of allowing or, in, in, or um, using a building construction technique, which is going to allow that wood to expand and contract. So some of you, this may be very well known, but I'll just go ahead and describe for those who may not know. So, so say this is an actual piece of wood, right? This is not some sort of uh, uh, engineered product. You could see the grain obviously goes this way, right? So the wood is going to contract and expand more against the grain or essentially perpendicular to the grain direction than it will in the grain direction, right? So let's say I fix these down with a with a really strong glue like uh, this uh, tight bond ultimate wood glue. Now, talking about adhesives, this tight bond ultimate wood glue is also uh, definitely a recommendation in my hand. If you put two pieces of wood together and glue them together, with, especially with this product or many other kinds of wood glues, the bond will actually be stronger than the wood itself. Okay, if, it, if the joint's done properly. And that's great for certain applications, but in an application like this, right? So let's say I used this glue and glued this board directly to this piece, it would not allow this board to, to expand and contract. And when you have a, 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 you know, a, a flooring size that's this big, this whole thing is gonna need to have the ability to expand and contract a little bit. So thing, so you know, this is a great lesson on adhesives. Even though that caulking is probably not considered an adhesive in it itself, I will tell you it has a very good adhesive quality. Different kinds of adhesives have different kinds of purposes in wood in wood glue situations. Now, as you will see later in the project, like when I build the skeleton that I will later skin with all the cedar wood, 
the main joints of that, I will use this wood glue because it's not a massive surface area. Um, and, and you can use a product like this to combine that because you don't expect as much flex. But if you don't allow a flex, the, what will the wood will do is it will crack and split or it will bow. And that's obviously not what we want. And then when you put these in, um, you want to leave a, a small little gap between the boards, the planks, so they can have some room to expand and contract. And that's just how it is. So, but, um, so that's a little lesson there, both about adhesives and how this was constructed and, um, and you know, some thoughts and considerations when using actual wood in large applications. Um, but this, I thought this wood floor would be very attractive. Of course, later in the project, you know, I'm gonna sand it down a little bit smoother in certain spots and, um, uh, and then of course I'll put some kind of finish on it. Um, I'll, I'll likely, um, so this camper, I used a, a, uh, a product known as Prolux. It was, a uh, previously known as Sickens, which may be the more well-known name. It's, it's meant for like log cabins and it worked out very well as, as a protectant. And I thought it added a nice finish. Uh, I essentially got the same product, but I got a slightly different color. Um, and, uh, and, and ultimately I'll, I'll probably finish that floor in that. Um, uh, but I thought the floor was beautiful. Um, another little benefit is, so where these seams are, there's, there's a, a batten that essentially goes across and another batten. And then this floor sits very tight against that polystyrene, um, insulation board. And it's kind of has a nice, uh, a, a very a nice feel. It's almost got at certain points. It's almost got just a very very subtle soft flex to it. Um, uh, that may not sound satisfying, but it's actually when you walk on it, it actually uh, it just it feels really really nice. And uh, I'm very excited about it. So, anyways, I've talked to you guys heads off, but uh, I've talked about the fact that we've got the new um, uh, camper build in progress. I'll call it Camper Build 2.0. Um, uh, I'll try to release a video weekly or every two weeks on its progress, and I'll try to talk about some technical aspects, maybe more so than I had in the original build videos as we go on. Um, my timeline for this construction process is, is you know, about three months. Um, and there's going to be a lot of really interesting surprises. I think you guys are going to be really excited about this, especially as it progresses uh, from this point on. Um, but I do throw some comments in there, whether they be suggestions, maybe if you have questions, I don't, uh, try to keep the questions specific to where we're at in the build process. But if you have, you know, a question about like, Hey, how did you do that floor or, or, you know, what, what's this or what's that? Um, you know, go ahead and ask them and I'll try to answer them in the, in the following video. Um, and, and Hey, if you guys see me building and you have any suggestions at any points of something that you could do to, you know, that might help out or make it better or maybe an idea. I'd love to hear them. And uh, um, I will try to throw in a, and I'm no expert, guys. I just, you know, but I'll try to throw in a little tech tip, maybe a tip that I've learned, uh, you know, such as I had with the adhesives in every video just for you guys to keep in mind. All right? Thanks a bunch. Bye.